Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in my living room on Mark's Aquatics. Right then, on this little video, we're going to give you a little update on the Evo, the little Fluval Evo marine system that we put up, that little nano system that we built up a few weeks ago now, or it's probably a couple of months ago now actually, but I'm just going to give you a little run through on what's been going on inside the system. Now I'll get you a little bit closer in on the uh, on the corals. As you can see, I've put a pair of Clarkies in there, which I've had out in my coral room now for, for some time, which I bought off a fellow reefer, and they're doing extremely well in there, and they're showing signs of breeding. They're a little bit spooky, these two. They like to hide in their little cave, regularly go into their anemone on the right, oh, sorry, on the left-hand side, and they go in there, and um, there's a little patch of rock they've been cleaning up there for the last couple of days she's starting to get a little bit chunkier in her belly so uh, she's filling up with eggs so hopefully within the next sort of week maybe two weeks we'll have a nice little cl clutch of eggs in there and we can be bringing on some baby clarkies as well i'll give you a little update on the the last two little clownfish that we've got in the coral room they're doing extremely well they're growing we've got their colors now and um i'll show you those guys a little bit later on in the video so uh, stay tuned for that they're looking super cute and uh, looking really nice. Right, that's better, we're a little bit closer in now. Right then, I'll take you through what's been going on. Now you can see the GSP, the old green star polyps on the left hand side there, have started to creep lovely up the side of that wall of the filter system there. Growing really, really well. I cut a little piece off and I've put it this side as well, so that's gonna do the same on the other side now and start creeping up the glass as well. I've added a little hammer coral on this side. The zoas are a little bit moody at the moment. They've closed up because the lights haven't long been on so they're just about to come out. Coming out nice and slow, little hermit crab perched there in his little yellow shell on top of the rock. We've got our Monty, plated Montes there, which are starting to lip up now and curl up, which is nice. The one that there, the red one there, which is a little bit higher to the light, is bleached out slightly. Now for a little tank, these lights are very, very strong, as you can see, because they've, uh, they've bleached it out. It looked like it's white and died off, but actually it's, a, it's what they call in the coral trade is coral bleaching, and that's what happens either when you get a higher temperature or light swings, the lights are too powerful. But if I go up closer, I'll show you in a minute with my little flipper magnifier, all the polyps are still extended on the ends and all the way around the lip. On the edge there but they're just that tissue is just turned white it's underneath the pulsing zinnia which has gone absolutely crazy as you can see from when i first put it in i absolutely love this stuff love that movement i'll switch the pumps off shortly and i'll just show you how it moves independently on that little pulse system that it's got as it works in there it's absolutely amazing big duncan coral co uh, colony which i've put in there as well which looks absolutely stunning the clownfish do try and host it now and again, but it closes up and gets annoyed. And now they've decided we're not going to bother with that anymore. We're going to stick to our anemone on the left-hand side there. That little red tricolour bubble tip there, which is growing very, very nicely. I got that off the same guy, Martin. If you're watching, cheers, mate, for all these little bits and the Clarkies. They look really nice in there. And um, we've got some more green star polyps here as well. Now, they're not as, they're not as colourful as, this, as these guys. It's a different type. It's like a more of a mint... Um, green to those polyps there. I'll show you that when we get into the blue lights. So I'll put that on a little bit later on. But you can see the way that it's grown up there and slimed all the way up underneath those rocks there. And that's going to grow nicely all around those rocks and cover everything. It looks absolutely stunning given a few more months' time. We've got the Pacillopora there as well, which is obviously it's, that's bleached out as well because of that very, very strong light. A little bit more colour now growing on the tips as it's getting used to that light but when I first put it in there it didn't it, it bleached right out so uh, but it's starting to get a little bit of color back in it now it's getting getting used to the lights we've got some zoas in the back there nice little some nice little uh, green dragon eye zoas which are looking nice and what else can I show you I've got my nice little aptasia there which everyone keeps saying get rid of but I still haven't got around to getting rid of him he's not doing any harm there's another little one which has popped out on the top there but I'll get my uh, my Joe's juice, as it's called in the trade, and I will stick some of that on him, and that'll that'll get rid of him one of these days. I think there's a couple more at the back there as well. 
Now there's a couple of ways you can get rid of them. It's either you can get Aptasia Remover, different brands are out there. The Joe's Juice is the one I use, but um, there's all different types out there, different methods. You can put file fish in there, an Aptasia eating file fish. They'll get rid of the more um, dominant ones, the bigger ones. And the best thing for getting rid of the smaller ones is peppermint shrimps. They're absolutely fantastic for getting rid of baby Aptasia. They'll graze those off the rocks and keep them nice and clean. Thing is with peppermint shrimps is you hardly ever see them. They're always stuck under somewhere. They're more of a nocturnal species. They like to come out when the lights go off and, um, and come out and root around. But they do a great job in there. I can't put one in this tank with these Clarkies because they're very, they're, she's very big and very aggressive and this is her territory now so if I put any shrimps in there now she would, she'd, she'd kill them so uh, I'm going to have to get in there with the old Joe's juice I think and get rid of them that way. One thing I love about the Pulsing Xenia is just the way it slides across the top of the rocks. It'll stretch out and as soon as a little bit touches another piece of the rock like up there it's just touched up under there and then within literally a couple of days you'll have another little group will hop off where it's touched it'll stretch and it'll snap and it'll leave a new little colony on its own and it just keeps working its way across so if you've got a flow which is coming left to right or right to left wherever it goes you'll find that it'll just keep depositing all the way across your reef or if you want to put one on the back there it'll grow all over the back of the glass which looks absolutely amazing you have a whole pulse in background um, I may do that. I think it might creep over there on its on its own steam in the end, or I could move another piece further back um, to get that to uh, to spread across there as well. Looking forward to the uh, the green star polyps there going up the side and getting that all nice and green. That's doing a really nice job of spreading. That is now. Duncan colonies are brilliant in these sort of tanks. As you can see, it's they're fully out. They don't mind a little bit of nitrate in the water um, as with the pulsing xenia as well. Sometimes your tanks can be a little bit too clean and these things will struggle and die because they actually will consume the nitrate in the water, some species. So uh, they will, you'll find they'll do a little bit better with a little bit of nitrate in. And with a small system like this, you're gonna find obviously feeding the fish and the fish waste and so on will just give you that extra little bit of uh, nitrate in the water. So that'll, that'll be beneficial for your tank. As you can see, everything's thriving in there. It's looking great so far. I say the only thing I would say to Fluval, if you do watch this video, is try and put a little bit more blue into your main spectrum, and maybe a couple of red LEDs in there would be uh, would be absolutely splendid as well. Because your other marine lights that you do where you can use your app to change it, I think that would be a fantastic idea for these. Is having that that same app that you've got on your other marine lights, um, so you can change the colours of these little levers. It'd be fantastic because you could really dial it in a, little, a lot better then for the corals that you keep. Um, and that would give another dynamic to the tank, it really would. I know a lot of people take the lids off and they put other little lights on their AI primes I've seen people use and different other lights, which are fantastic. By doing that though, you're taking the lid off the tank, that way you're going to get a lot more evaporation and then you're going to have to start working out little auto top-up systems and things like that because you're going to be losing a lot to condensation. So. Um, it's going to be your fluctuations in your salinity is going to go up and down very very quickly so you've got to be careful of those sort of things that's more for the uh, more for the more seasoned marine keeper i would say when you get into stuff like this but just for a straight off tank this is absolutely fabulous and it's nice watching it evolve it really is and it's a great little they say they're great little setups for people that are new die and terry if you're watching this they've bought a lot of coral from me they've bought this system and theirs is coming on in leaps and bounds. It's looking really good lately. Um, they've just added their first little pair of clownfish in there, which is absolutely amazing. Lovely to see it. She sent me a picture of it, and it looks absolutely lovely. Really, really is coming along nicely. And with time, it's only going to get better with time. So, uh, so keep up with those photographs, please. I look forward to receiving those. Okay, there's the uh, the tricolour rose bubble tip anemone. If you look in the centre there, you get a lovely green at the base there with the... Uh, those gorgeous little tentacles which are starting to bubble up nicely now because they keep going back in there shaking around they've been cleaning off this little part of the rock here in the evening times and um, so like I said hopefully we'll have some eggs from those soon that'll be fantastic to to witness those doing a spawn 
I absolutely love Duncan corals, always have done. You get some really nice ones that they're quite rare in the trade. You get them now and again where you come in where they got lovely bright green stems and green heads. They come in different uh, types as well. You get the ones that are like, these are the more of the flower head type, more, more tentacles on them. You get some with longer tentacles as well around the outsides. But these are absolutely stunning. They got like a light blue center to these which glow absolutely amazing under the, the blue lights. So I'll, I'll turn all the lights off in a minute and I'll put my little filter on so you can see what it looks like at night. It looks absolutely beautiful. Now these will readily accept food. They love mice, shrimp, even flake food. Anything that you put in there, they'll consume it. And they're a great little coral, starter coral to feed. And as you see, they'll grow into lovely big colonies as well. I mean, you only need one of those heads for the piece chopped off, which I've got a lot of if you guys want any. Go on eBay, I've got some for sale on there. Um, I think it's about, I think about £10 for, for a nice big head of, on, off one of them and they'll splinter off, little buds will come off and they'll start growing in time and you'll have a nice big colony within sort of 18 months, I would say. You know, they, they, they do grow fairly fast, but um, they're a lovely coral to, to watch, to grow, to feed and to interact with, as it were. They, uh, a lot of the corals you can't see feed, obviously they're very, very small polyps. You can't see them very well, but... Um, but with these guys, they really do, and feed aggressively as well. Mr. Clarkie there, just coming out the back, little male. They're hiding away. They are very very shy fish, these two. We normally find clownfish aren't too fussed about people, but the Clarkies seem to be quite uh, quite nervous. I'll just... There's Mrs. just coming out for it to say hello. <laughs> Good morning. Well, would you believe it? There's my little... Cold water, believe it or not, shrimp, which I got down from one of my local bays around here last summer, and I thought that he had died, but he must be hiding right underneath that ledge there, and I've he's just basically come out for the camera, which is fantastic. Lovely translucent colour, blue and little orange segments all over his legs, and it's, it's lovely to see him in there. Look at that, that's brilliant. I really thought I'd lost him, so that's a good sign. So he's still doing well in there. Obviously they're from rock pools, so the temperature can raise quite significantly in the summer and um, you're gonna, it can go right up to sort of like 30 degrees in, in, in a rock pool. So they're easily kept in these tanks, but you've got to acclimate them slowly into your system. You can't just plonk them straight in, obviously. You've got to just drip feed them in like you would do all your other shrimps that you do. Hello. And, um, oh, that's, that's really made my day. As you can see, I have a lovely scratch on the glass I did the old classic of picking up a little bit of substrate and without even realising I'd done it, dragged it across and scratched the glass. Clever Mark, but there you go, these things do happen in this game and it's damn annoying when it does happen as well, because there's nothing really you can do about it. Little Montiporas are growing well there, you can see it's just cupping up at the edge here, all the way around and starting to spread. Growth is slow. Um, I'm not doing anything chemistry wise in this tank. I'm just giving this a regular 10 to 15 percent water change every couple of weeks and obviously all your different additives are, are put in the salt. So you're mixing that up and you're adding, you're taking that old water out, you're adding more minerals in there, more calcium, magnesium and everything is, is in the salt mix if you look on the buckets. So um, by giving it a regular water change you're replenishing those in there and your corals are going to keep growing. Obviously these are hard corals, small small stony polyps, as you can see the tiny little polyps all over there. And you get that lovely growing white, or sometimes even blue, different colours on the Mons of Porus, um, that leading edge. You can see just over the back here is another piece of um, of GSP, Grey Star Polyps, which I put in there as well, which is growing up the back nicely. So everything's starting to take off, really happy the way it's going so far. Hammer coral is doing really well. That was a single head when I put it in there, and now it's it's branched out. Another head coming off on the right hand side there, and that's really growing nicely. That is, that's quite an aggressive feeder as well. That actually takes in flake. I've seen it take flake in, and uh, obviously the powdered that ocean nutrition food that you see me use on one of the other. I think when I was actually putting this together. So, um, in fact, in my little cupboard here. I have some here. This is the one I use. I'll just put that in front of the camera so you can see it. Oh, let's go. We'll just go back a little bit there, I think. 
there you go reef pulse by ocean nutrition that's the one i use it's a very very fine powder food disperses lovely in the water turn your pump off leave your your power head running okay so it circulates but then you can turn the main pump off so it doesn't get all sucked into the uh, into your filter so it gets blown around and feeds everything and then after 10 or 15 minutes turn your main pumps back on again so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the other filter on now put the blue lights on and we'll have a little look around the tank to some music and um and i'll just show you how these things look under the actinic lights of a night time Alright guys, we're in the coral room, there you go, there's the two, you can see one there around the back of the inlet there, and there's one of the little bait there, there's the other little guy there, and they are doing extremely well, now it's hard to focus on these little guys, I'll try and get a bit closer, there you go, you can see they've got their full coloration now, a little play in the bubbles, but we have little baby clowns now, instead of those little tiny fry we had we got some lovely colors come back there you go you've got these little black fins there on the bottom your little stripe doesn't go right the way through it's quite uh, quite a nice one that one absolutely amazing look at that right inside the clownfish tank here I've put that little bit of pulsing xenia in there which isn't pulsing great at the moment but um, some pulse more than others but that's something that they can go and play in when they feel like it they're still up around the surface at the moment which is where I put the brine shrimps in where I've been feeding them so they tend to stay up there a little bit anyway guys I hope you like that little update on the clownfish and that little fluval evo there's a nice little aerial view there of some of the maxi mini maxi carpet anemones that I've got in stock at the moment some lovely colors in there look at that we we'll just come down this way as well and I'll just show you through the glass. Absolutely beautiful. They, are. they don't get much more than four inches across when they're fully when they're fully open, so they're great for putting in tanks and uh, they're not going to get too big and they tend to stay put where you put them, they tend to stay there, which is always good because as with bubble tips and things as you know they always end up where you don't want them or stuck in a power head somewhere. So uh, these little guys tend to stay in the sand where you put them and there's some beautiful colours in there. I'll have some more rock flower anemones coming in shortly as well, so keep your eyes peeled on my on my website and things for that as well. Yes, and I'd like to say a massive uh, congratulations to MD Aquatics. Doing amazingly well for the year. I think just over a year that you've been doing it now, I think you're up to about 80 odd thousand subscribers. You've had a huge jump recently and um, it's absolutely phenomenal. It really is good. I'm really pleased for you, mate, and I uh, hope it may continue and you get your plaque very, very soon. Anyway, from me at Mark's Aquatics, I'd like to say, as always, you're all stars, love your loads, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.